It's been a while since we did a type challenge video, so we're going to do another one of these today. If you haven't seen my other type challenge videos, I'll have one of them linked up above here. But for now, let's head over to the type challenge repository and take a look at what we've got. We have done some of the medium type challenges before. I think it's time to venture into the hard ones. And the one I want to look at today is the very first one here, which they call simple view. Now, of course, view here is a reference to the view front end framework, which to be honest, I've never actually used. But as we'll read the description here, you'll see this is a pretty straightforward forward idea. In fact, I'm going to skip the description and just walk you through the code sample they have here. So this simple view function takes an object and this object has three properties on it. It's got a function named data. It's got an object called computed and it's got an object called methods. So what do we do with these? Well, the idea here is that data should return an object and this object becomes the base value for the component we're creating, the base set of fields. Then computed can create new fields based on those old ones. So you can see we've got a full name field that we're creating here which is just first name plus last name. And then finally, we have methods that we want to add to this object that we're creating. So in the end, we expect to have an object with first name, last name, amount, full name, and then also the method hi. Now, the thing to note here is that within the computed and methods functions, we actually can use this to refer to the object that we are building up. So inside a full name here, we do this dot first name, this dot last name. And then in our methods here, we can say this dot full name. Now, notice something else here. In full name here, even though this is a function in computed, we actually take the return value of this and assign it to the full name property so that in our methods, we just do this dot full name dot to lowercase. We don't have to call full name as a function. So the whole idea here is we want to be able to strongly type this structure. We want to be able to say whatever we return from data should be our base value for this. And then inside of computed dot full name, we should be able to say this dot first name and know that that is a string. And we should know that this dot a Age, for example, doesn't exist. Let's take a look at how we can do this. I've opened up the type challenge in a new pane here. Right now, you can see we've got a bunch of type errors. We should not be able to access first name, get random and data up here, but we should be able to access all these other properties. Right now, all we have is a simple function declaration here. I think we can see that pretty much this whole exercise is going to be creating a type for our options here. So let's create a type up above. We're going to call it options. And then we will also pop that in down here. Now, what do we know about options? We know it needs to have a data field, a computed field and a methods field. So let's add those. We've got data, which can be any for now computed and then methods. So with this in place, we can see that a bunch of our type errors actually disappear, but we've kind of cheated. If I hover over this dot first name or this dot last name in our computed value here, you can see these are just considered any as is the value of this. And so we want something a little more strongly typed than that. Let's take a look at this data function first. We know that it takes no arguments and that it returns some shape that we care about later on in our computed and method objects. So what we can do here is change data to be a function and we don't know what it should return. We could say any, but let's use a generic instead and say it should return D for data. Obviously, we have to create a generic here at the top. So we'll say options expects some data D and and then we also need to pass it in here. Now down here in simple view, of course, D is still unresolved. So what we can just do is add it to the function here and say there's going to be some generic D. We don't really know exactly what it is, but we'll figure it out as we go along. So now we know that data returns some type D. And if we hover over data down here, we can see that it returns a first name, a last name and an amount. Now we're still not quite done with the data function yet because we still have this error that we're expecting down here. If you're not familiar with the TS expect error directive, what's going on basically is that we're saying the next line after this comment should throw a type error. And so in the case of first name and get random, they are throwing type errors. And so there's no red squiggly. However, this red squiggly is called because as you can see, we have an unused directive. Essentially, this dot data still works. And so we're not throwing an error. Now, why would it still work? Well, if we hover over this, we can see that this has a type of options. Now, essentially, then what we want to do inside of our data function is ensure that this doesn't point to anything. We cannot reference this from inside data because we're trying to override the value of this with what we return from data. Now TypeScript actually gives us a way to strongly type the value of this. If we pop into the TypeScript docs for a sec, notice that we can declare this in a function. Typically TypeScript will understand what this is, but notice what it says here. The JavaScript specification states that you cannot have a parameter called this. So TypeScript uses that syntax space to let you 
you declare this in the function body. And so you can see it allows you to add a parameter called this, and that will get stripped out during compilation. And now you can strongly type the value of this. So what we can do in our type here, in our data function type up here, is say this is void. Notice if I hover over this, it's void, and therefore we cannot access the data function. And now this line is throwing an error, and our directive is satisfied. Okay, so let's move on now. If I come down here to this, notice that in computed, this is still any, first name is still any. If we come down here to full name, this is still any. So we need to clean up these types. If we take a look at computed here, computed is going to be some type of its own that we're not really aware of, right? It's going to have some set of functions that we really can't know about. So we're going to call that C. And this is just another generic that we're going to add. Okay, so now we know what the type of computed is. And if we hover over computed here, we can see that it's just a full name of any. Now, we're not quite done with computed yet, because notice if I hover over this, it thinks this is itself. If our simple view function here is doing some binding behind the scenes, then really this we want to reference our object here. So how can we do that? We know the type of this should be whatever's returned from our data function, which is D. That's the type. So what we need to do is tell computed the type of this inside any of your methods should be D. Well, TypeScript gives us a way to do that. In the documentation, we can see this type is one of the utility types that TypeScript offers. And notice that it doesn't actually transform the type. It just serves as a marker for a contextual this type. And so essentially, we can tell TypeScript inside these functions, here's what the value of this is going to be. All right, so let's give this a try. We can say computed now is going to be C, and we're going to intersect that with this type of D. And so now we say computed is a C and this inside of all of those C's will be D. And so now if we hover over this, we can see it works. We've got first name, last name, and amount inside each one of these. So now we can move on to methods here. Now I think you can see the pattern that we're following here. We could come back up here to methods and instead we're going to call this M because it's going to be just some set of methods. And so we can add M to all of our generics. We know exactly what M is, but we also need to set the value of this. And as you can see, this currently is the method object, but we want to change it to be the value of what we get out of data and also what we get out of computed. We can just do and this type and we can say this is an intersection of C and D. Now, if you're following along here, you might notice we have two problems. Let's take a look. If we scroll down, this dot get random does not exist. Why is that? Well, because get random is part of methods. Right now, the way we have this, this set up, this only refers to what we get out of data and what we get out of computed. Does doesn't let methods interact with other methods, but that is one of the requirements here. So we can solve that pretty simply by just intersecting this with M as well. And that solves the get random problem, which now correctly returns a number. We do have a problem with full name though. Full name came out of our computed field and notice that full name is a function that returns a string. However, the way we're using it here, we expect it to be a string, not a function that returns a string. How can we type C here as being the return value for each of the fields in C instead of the functions themselves on C? First, I'm going to create a function type here, which is just going to be some set of args and this maps to to a sum any. So this is our generic function. And now we want to map over the fields of a particular type and see if they are functions. We know TypeScript has a type called return type, which allows you to pass in a function and get the type out. You can see here that X is any. And so we can get the return type out of that function. We can use this in our computed. Let's call this field return types is going to take some type T and we want to map over this type T. So we can map over all of the keys in T by saying K in key of T. And if we do this and we just do K, we just get a map of keys to keys. So for example here, let's just throw this in C here and we're going to wrap C in this. And now if we come down here and let's just hover over this, we can see that this, uh, it doesn't do a great job of showing it. So let me just copy this and we'll paste it out here. And now now we should see if we hover over X, X is full name, a full name. So we just got the key twice, which makes sense. So now you might think we could just do return type of T at K. That's all right, except notice that the problem is T of K might not satisfy the constraint of being a function. Return type expects to receive a function. So we can do a check for that here. And this is why we have our function up here. So we can say if T of K 
uh, extends a function, then our type will be the return type of that function. Otherwise, it will be never. And now if we hover over X here, we can see that we have full name as a string. We may have completed this challenge. Let's see. We have, if we come down here and hover over full name, this dot full name is a string. And as you can see, our uh, string test down here passed. So that was a look at the simple view TypeScript challenge. We used the this parameter in a function and also the this type utility type to give us a lot more control over how we create objects in TypeScript. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.